I'm gonna open this up for you all to see right along with me. We've got dev blog number 26, starting up with Philippe. He says, it's been a very busy month overseeing the stress test and fixing bugs. We also upgraded our security and added a variety of quality of life features for the skin system, which were built upon feedback provided by our very helpful stress testers, such as being able to rename the skin presets, save and share patterns, as well as some improvements for the camera. In addition, we've also continued to make headway on the development of update number six, such as participating in design meetings and the planning for the expanded diet system, which should also bring forth the new migration system, as well as the gore system. So despite update five not having been released yet, the game production continues, such as the development of the Truidon for update 6.5. We can confirm that the Truidon is feature complete now, while balance and QA testing are still pending, since QA is currently focused on helping with the stress testing. Besides that, there are some cool systems that I have been working on in the background, such as prototype concept for the burrowing mechanic and a fully dynamically... Oh god. A full dynamic scar system that doesn't have a... <laughs> Jesus. Um, hold on a sec. I gotta check on my, uh... My packy here. Um, okay. I think they got it under control. That scared me so bad. Um, where was I? <laughs> uh, besides that, there are some cool systems that I have been working on in the background, such as prototype concepts for the burrowing mechanic and a fully dynamic scar system that doesn't have a release date yet, but should be able to give players the desired permanent scars feature. For now, that is all I can talk about. See you next month. Right on, Philippe. Some interesting stuff in there. Happy to hear that they're working on the burrowing mechanic and we're getting a permanent scar system. That is really cool. Very excited. Let's move on to DM. Most of the month was spent fixing bugs and adding some finishing touches before the update goes out. We have gotten a lot of useful feedback from our stress test, which you may have seen some videos from already. Some of the more important changes include making the nest widget less obtrusive. It now scales down with distance and fades out when there's nothing important going on, like uh, bad temperature or invites. Nest placement has also been improved to work on steeper surfaces. Hatchlings now automatically join the parents group, but they will also be removed automatically if the group is over the standard limit when they hit juvenile. Originally, all of the nesting system required both parents to be alive. During actual gameplay, however, this turned out to be quite limiting due to one of the parents often dying or having to log out, so I ended up making some changes to make single parents a possibility, which was a big change I really wanted to see, and I'm so glad that they implemented that. Uh, continuing here, I also had time to work on something that will be coming after this update. I don't want to spoil it too much, but it has to do with the movement of a dinosaur you might have seen some teasers for on our Discord server. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what that could be. I'd love to hear what you guys could speculate that it might be. You guys always got way better guesses than I do. But moving on to visual tech here. What is all of this? <laughs> visual tech 48 says, there is a reason I've missed the last month's dev blog, or there is a reason I've missed the last month's dev blog. It's that it's been I've been working on items such as rocks, which have been ported to the game to be fully usable and customizable to our needs. This means pretty much last month I've been making those rocks proper and optimized. We now have heavily detailed cliffs, large rock formations, and proper detailing kits with them for the environment. I won't go into more detail with them, but hopefully you will see them soon enough. Besides that, I've been working heavily on set dressing for the flooring, aka base plane or base plan foundations of various locations which Jace has been crafting. As well, I've made a few large prop set pieces for the dockyard, such as two variations of silos and one fuel silo. Excellent! So happy to hear about that. 
Ah, oh, we're gonna finally be getting some stuff here for the uh, for the port. Ooh, look at all this stuff. Ooh, exciting. Cannot wait to see these in game. In addition, I've worked on the monorail base. Monorail? Ooh, I hope that that'll be functionable. Oh, I doubt it. I don't think it would be. That'd make getting around too easy for humans. Let me finish this. In addition, I've worked on the monorail base so we can incorporate it in the map, which features more detail and changes to the mesh itself. Right on, that's gonna be spanning the map? Oh man, I can't wait for all this human stuff. And lastly, I want to showcase the aviary, which will soon be featured in the game. Right on, the new and improved aviary, my friends. Look at it. Oh, that is exciting. Who said that? <laughs> Hacker, this is, this is way better than mid, my friend. Tap wings showing off their Shantungasaurus concept art. Return of a Titan. I didn't get I didn't get to see it much in its heyday, but whenever I did see them, they always looked like a force to be reckoned with, which made me eager to put it its full size to work. A major source of inspiration were moose and other sizable undulates. With the idea of it being a fickle animal ranging from benign to knocking your lights out without a moment's notice. We were leaning towards abilities where it could throw its weight around from knocking others down, crushing the air out of them, and of course its notable stomp. While you may think they're relatively safe to be around, you'd be taking a big risk, big risk getting too comfortable with this hadrosaur. And then the Ankylosaurus concept art. Normally, you're always going to have to worry about the bigger creatures on the aisle. Ankylosaurus might be the opposite of that. Borrowing inspiration from armadillos and some lizards, we very much wanted to keep the Anki doesn't care tone with this animal, hunkering down and shrugging off attacks from larger predators, but needing to exercise a little more strategy against smaller foes, leaning towards attackers to hide the sides of its underbelly from smaller predators that can nip away at its soft spots. Some other ideas we're playing with are its heaviness, allowing it to walk underwater rather than swim across rivers, along with the ability to use its tail to get at food some other animals might not be able to reach. And of course, it wouldn't be Anki if it couldn't crack some bones. So yes, very excited for the Ankylosaurus. Hypno, who is the QA lead, here says, QA has been busy this month validating, invalidating all of the bug reports submitted by our new stress testing team. With these two teams working in conjunction, you should expect the playing experience for future updates to be a lot smoother than previous iterations. As performance and mechanics working currently under high Lo higher load is of utmost importance during these sessions. In the month of June, along with in the month of June alone, we're validating a whopping 300 unique issues since stress testing began. So hopefully we'll have caught any glaring issues from the last update that were causing you headaches. You'll be happy to know that the areas you can drink through the ground are now a thing of the past. No more escaping the wrath of the Dinosuchus. Besides bug validating, I've been keeping a close eye on feedback during this time and looking for trends amongst the stress testers. They've been very useful in pinpointing areas where balance has been suffering or where new mechanics aren't living up to expectations. To, giving a few, to give a few examples without spoiling everything, nesting grounds give nest increased incubation speed, reduced temperature decay, increased nest health, and a growth speed boost to hatchlings. Knockdowns do not last as long as they did before, making them less of a death sentence across the board. Juvenile mobility has been improved. They accelerate faster than their adult counterparts, gradually slowing down to their regular acceleration rates. Tails now receive less damage when hit. Carnotaurus is now more susceptible to bleed. And Dinosuchus receives the S nutrient from cannibalizing instead of sharing the same nutrient with fish. More incentive to cannibalize. Dinosuchus can regenerate its oxygen faster by resting, scenting. Dryosaurus can dodge, or Dryosaurus dodge has its 
had its cost removed and controls reworked. Just tap A or D to determine the dodge direction. Various other diet changes, Utah Raptor Bite, Buff, and much more. Now Jake, 3D Artist, says these last few months I've been doing a lot of vegetation overhauls. We won't be going over that today, but they look dope and should be revealed soon. Instead, we'll go over another collection of assets I made that will serve a gameplay purpose for the juveniles. These ones take the form of various shapes of cycads. The asset was actually prototyped a few months ago, but now I've gone and refined its visual appearance. Pretty straightforward on a technical level, just lots of texture work to make sure it looks its best. I like it, those are cool looking plants. Uh, Wedge, who's the sound designer here, says, I've been gradually making progress on sounds for Truidon. With each new mechanic added, more sounds are necessary to be made. So the list of supplementary sounds needed for each creature is now pretty extensive. Truidon attack vocals will contrast its colorful signature sounds that will be used throughout the rest of the vocals for Truidon. Using gnarly aggressive sounds, starting with a sharp attack to give it that fearsome snap that will alarm the unsuspecting, the sound of Truidon's unique ability will be a mixture of these two sound styles. I've also created a vocal sound for each playable when feeding their hatchling, and a wet, squishy, foley sound to accompany the regurgitation visual. Some final additions this month are missing foley and dinosaur-specific sounds on all nesting animations and adjusting that tap-hold modulation on the threatened vocals so that the difference is more apparent. And our final input here from Kiss and Kitten. A big thank you to all of those that diligently participated in the stress test. The feedback was quite valuable and put to good use. It has been an uphill battle getting the creature foundations into a mechanically comfortable state, but we're finally almost there, with a general framework and foundation set for the animals once the gore update launches. We can move production away from such heavy hitting mechanics for the animals and focus on bringing in new playables, which may have unique features and abilities but not much that would cause roster-wide changes, which is very good. Some of the new additions will include Bipayosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Gallimimus, and Herrerasaurus, as well as a few we'll be getting to after those like Diabloceratops, Dilophosaurus, Baryonyx, Oviraptor, Ostroraptor, and more. Not necessarily in that order, and perhaps with a surprise twist here and there. On the human front, the framework for our Gen 2 has been established and will be making its way to the design team for fleshing out. We'll finally start showing a little bit more of the development uh, development the Gen 2s have been undergoing, but I digress. Update 6 will be introducing Gore as mentioned before. We have some prototypes we'll start showing off here within the next few weeks, pending some art, so you'll get a rough idea of what to expect. Philippe has been hard at work on various prototypes, actually. Additionally, alongside Update 6, we'll be including the features omitted from the initial implementation of diets, as well as the accompanying migration system. If all goes well, we may also include a previously unannounced, fe unannounced feature intended to make juvenile gameplay more fun and engaging. Be good to each other. And that's it for the dev blog for June. So let me know what you guys think. What was your favorite part of this dev blog? Um, I'm certainly excited to hear that after um, the other dinos, right, right here at the end, who, what were they? Um, we, we knew Bipayosaurus, Serato, Galley, and Herrera were coming up next. But to know that Diablo, Dilophosaurus, Baryonyx, Ovi, Ostroraptor are coming thereafter, that's exciting news. But I'm cer certainly hyped about these new human building assets. Really cool stuff. Can't wait to see more of them come to fruition in-game. I had no idea there was going to be a monorail. And so excited to see the aviary make its grand return. But that's it for the dev blog, guys. Appreciate you hanging in there with us for this one. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you. Let's get back to the game.